Cool. Uh, welcome back, everybody. Uh, welcome back to CE 374 U Urban Stormwater. Uh, we've got an exciting lesson for you today. Uh, a couple of quick announcements before we get started. Homework four is due Monday. So that's this coming Monday. Uh, this is a shorter assignment uh, that will cover some of the aspects of um, uh, street and highway drainage. So curb design, gutter design, uh, curb inlet design, as well as uh, storm sewer design. So this is a shorter assignment that will be due um, Monday at 11.59 p.m. Uh, come see us at office hours either today, tomorrow, or Thursday if you have any uh, questions on homework four and we will do our best to help you. Uh, for homework four, a, a, a problem came up with the second problem. So uh, for problem 4.2, use a Manning's roughness of 0 0.014. So this was posted in the announcements uh, today and I'll update the homework document accordingly soon. Okay. Uh, are there any questions on homework four? Any general questions about homework in general? Okay. Cool. So you may have noticed that I posted a document on the course project. So I'm going to talk with you about this in a little bit. Um, this is a document just describing kind of uh, what the course project is going to be about, uh, what you're expected to turn in, and how it's going to be graded, and that sort of thing. So I'll, I'll cover this in a little more detail in a second. Um, our lesson today is going to cover HECRAS. So this is a uh, important piece of software in urban stormwater design. Um, so just a note before we get started to make sure that you have this downloaded and installed to your computer. So we'll be using version 5.05 .05 because the data that I'm going to be using for this tutorial requires uh, an older version of HECRAS. Newer versions will uh, cause problems. So use, use version 5.05 .05 of HECRAS. Go ahead and download and install that if you haven't done so. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about the data uh, in a second. Okay. Uh, are there any are there any questions before I move on? I'm going to start uh, just give a quick overview of the course project um, next. But are there any questions on any class logistical things? Yes. I I did get a haircut. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Um, cool. Are there any more uh, compliments for me? Uh, <laughs> questions. No, okay, um, great. Well, uh, let me go ahead and talk a little bit about the course project. So this is going to occupy most of our time um, for the next month or so. Uh, you can find a description of the course project uh, up in, if you go under uh, canvas file slash project, there'll be a, a document called course project.pdf. Uh, and I'll go ahead and kind of talk a little bit about this before we get started with HECRAS today. So this is going to occupy most of the remainder of class. We're going to do a, a bit more um, stormwater design. So basically, I've rearranged the class so that we learn HECRAS this week uh, so that you are prepared to use it for your course project. We're going to go back to culvert design the week following, and then a little bit on stormwater uh, detention basin design. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. No problem. Uh, we're going to go back after this week and talk a little bit about those two aspects of design, but then after that, the rest of the course will be just on the course project. Okay, so a uh, couple of logistical things. So this project will be due on, well, first let's talk a little bit about um, what the course project is. So this, this course project will uh, essentially kind of synthesize all of the material that you've learned in this class, you will be analyzing and redesigning a real world low water crossing in the city of Austin. Okay, so you'll be using all of the knowledge on open channel flow, hydrology, as well as all of the different software products that we've used in this class to look at an existing low water crossing in the city of Austin that's experiencing flooding problems and figure out how to uh, stop the flooding problems to meet Austin drainage criteria uh, manual specifications. Um, so this is a real world design problem. Um, we're gonna you know, 
look at various ways that you can solve this problem. So your design, it's fairly open-ended, but your design might uh, include modifications to the channel. It may include installation of a new culvert or redesign of a culvert, uh, redesign of a bridge, um, possible um, modifications upstream. So you may use, for instance, green infrastructure to reduce the amount of runoff that's occurring downstream, or you may install detention ponds upstream uh, to capture excess stormwater and prevent flooding at the site. So it's relatively open-ended. And the interesting thing is each of you will be getting a different um, location. And often the, the way to solve the flooding problems at the site will vary widely depending on which location you get. So it's an interesting, interesting design problem. Uh, in terms of what I'm expecting from you, uh, there will be two primary components. Uh, there will be a design report, which will be due at the very end of the class, as well as a final presentation, which will also be at the end of the class. Uh, so the things that you're expected to turn in are your design report, um, as well as a student assessment of teamwork form. So this is just essentially, um, you know, kind of stating what the different people in the group did and what your share of the, of the work was. So in terms of due date, the project report will officially be due Monday, December 5th, which is the last class day of the semester. Uh, however, I will accept project reports without any penalty up till Thursday, December 8th at 11.59 PM, which is our scheduled final exam time. Uh, our scheduled final exam day. So note that there's no actual final exam in this class, um, but I will accept, accept project reports up to December 8th without any penalty. So effectively, uh, December 8th is the final due date for the report. Okay, are there any questions? Are there any questions on the, on the due dates? Okay. And in addition to your final report, there will also be a final design presentation. So these will occur uh, tentatively on November 29th, December 1st and possibly uh, December 8th, which is our scheduled final exam day. Um, so note that you're expected to attend every group's project presentation. If you don't, um, you'll get a penalty to your final project grade. So please be considerate and watch all of your uh, colleagues' uh, design presentations, okay? Um, another note, for the presentations, we'll actually be inviting guests from industry and from the city to come and review your presentation so you get the real world experience of having your designs uh, reviewed by an external party. So we're gonna invite some, some reviewers from the city uh, <laughs> to review your design, okay? Yes. I would, I would, I would recommend it because um, yeah, I would recommend it. Yeah, I don't think I required that. But um, in the past, we did have students who dressed up. And I, it's always good to make a good impression, especially if you have, uh, you know, people from industry who you're interested in impressing, that sort of thing. Uh, yes? Um, let me think. I think possibly one person from GS Syntech. Uh, I'm still coming up with the list, but I, most, of the, most of the reviewers will be from um, government, so city of Austin um, and possibly Austin water. Yeah. Okay, are there any other, any other questions? Great, okay. So let's talk a little bit about the project requirements. So I have, I have four different project requirements here. Uh, the first project requirement is that you must complete a site visit. So each person on the team must visit your specific low water crossing. Um, so you shouldn't, you shouldn't do engineering without actually visiting the site. So make sure that you go to the site, take photos, um, take notes, um, and possibly even take measurements at the site um, for your final design. Uh, if you have any difficulties making it out to the site, please contact me so I can uh, accommodate you if needed. Um, apart from that, you will also need to turn in preliminary design. So this will be included in the final project report, but essentially each, each person on the team has to advance their own preliminary design. So each of you has to have your own individual preliminary design. 
Um, there might be several different ways to solve the problem. So I want each of you to explore one of these ways on your own and come up with your own complete preliminary design. Uh, so ideas for designs might include um, design slash redesign of the bridge or culvert at the low water crossing, uh, channel modification. So you may want to mod modify the channel upstream or downstream to increase the width and potentially reduce flooding that way. Um, you can design upstream retention basins or often in previous semesters, one solution students have come up with is kind of bypass retention basins that will kind of uh, route flow around the site. Uh, you may, for instance, um, increase the upstream pervious area fraction by installing green infrastructure upstream to, um, or just general land cover modifications to try to reduce runoff and thus reduce the flooding downstream. So there's a, there's a, a large amount of flexibility with how you solve the problem, but each person on your team has to advance one uh, preliminary design. So I'd recommend having separate designs for each of these different, uh, uh, you know, each of these uh, options as your preliminary designs. And these will be included, uh, all of these will be included in the appendix to your uh, final report. So these will go into your final report. Uh, after you come up with your preliminary designs, you will select, uh, you know, a subset of those designs for more detailed analysis. Um, and you will uh, it kind of advance that as your final design to be more thoroughly explored in the final report. Uh, note that for this project, your final design should be something that is relatively practical. Um, so you should consider the real world constraints that you are going to experience in you know, solving the flooding problems at the site. So for instance, um, you know, when you're redesigning the channel, which you're modifying the channel or just redesigning the bridge or culvert, you should consider, for instance, cost uh, cost constraints, you know, what would it cost to um, make modifications to the channel or bridge? Um, if you're designing an upstream retention basin or detention basin, you should consider the space constraints that you have at the site. So for instance, you can't, you can't like level a housing subdivision to build a new detention basin. You have to work within kind of the constraints that are given to you for the problem. So that's uh, that's going to be an important consideration for your final design. It needs to be something that can be achieved in the real world. Um, and then finally, you're going to kind of uh, just synthesize all of this into a final design report um, that will describe the present state of the low water crossing, uh, describe your final design, um, and kind of give your conclusions for what should be done to address uh, flooding problems at the site. Okay, are there any questions on these project requirements? Any questions? Okay, let's talk a little bit about the organization of the final report because this is ultimately the thing that you are going to turn in uh, that you will be evaluated on. Uh, so the follow the report needs to have the following structure. So first, introduction. So this kind of is the place where you describe the site and you describe the problem that needs to be fixed. Um, so you can use HECRAS and HECHMS models of the existing site to kind of show what's going on. Uh, and the idea here is to really identify what the problem is and kind of suggest what might be done to, to fix the issue. Okay. Uh, you also need to make specific reference to the Austin Drainage Criteria Manual, um, what, what conditions need to be met at the site and how you might fix those. Um, the second section of the report is the final design. So this will include the design, your description of the design, sketches and or uh, CAD drawings of your new design. Uh, it kind of just explains what your design is and what impacts it'll have on the location and the flooding problems therein. Uh, so you'll include, for instance, a sketch of the new infrastructure. Um, this can be either hand-drawn or CAD-drawn. Uh, HECRAS slash HECHMS simulations of the hydraulics. Uh, kind of describing what your changes are going to do hydraulically to the site and whether they're going to meet the Austin DCM requirements. Um, I also want you to include kind of some discussion of the disadvantages and potential challenges of your design. So what, what about your design might potentially be difficult or expensive to implement? Uh, so kind of just thinking about the real world constraints. And finally, a comparison to other 
uh, design options that you may have explored in your preliminary designs. Okay, and finally, you will have a one paragraph summary of your recommended design uh, and its advantages. Uh, you'll include references to anything that you've referenced in the text, as well as an appendix that includes all of the preliminary designs uh, with attribution to the students who did each of those preliminary designs, okay? Are there any questions on the uh, structure of the report? Yes. Um, so this, uh, this report will be presented in class, right? So it, is the expectation like sort of a PowerPoint or, uh, you know, a presentation style report rather than like a typed? Right. Yeah. So I, I'll post a separate, um, I'll post a separate PDF describing the project presentation, but they're going to be relatively short presentations and they're going to be PowerPoint. Okay. Gotcha. So, yeah. so this is separate from, from the presentation. Yeah, this is, I'll, I'll, I'll post a separate document with the presentation okay. requirements. Yeah. Uh, this is mostly just describing the report that you'll turn in. And uh, this is a group submission. Uh, so yeah, it's just one, one submission per group. Okay. And on the final page of this document, I have listed the different low water crossings that you will be looking at. So uh, for each of the teams, I have assigned you a different low water crossing in Austin. Um, you can take a preliminary look and kind of, you know, uh, check, check out the site um, based on this description here. But on Thursday, I will be actually showing you how you can download um, HECRAS and HEC-HMS models of your low water crossing to get started on the project. Okay, so we'll be, we'll be starting that on Thursday. Great. Uh, are there any questions on the course project? We're gonna be talking about this a lot, so I will be continuing to answer questions as we move on. But are there any, are there any other questions right now just on the course project or the requirements? No. Okay, cool. So we will officially get started on Thursday where I will um, show you how you can download HECRAS models for your low water crossing and get started on the analysis. Um, but before we can do that, we need to talk about HECRAS, which is kind of the primary model we'll be using for your projects. And that's what we'll be covering today. Okay, so uh, hopefully all of you have downloaded HECRAS 5.05 and have installed it on your system. Um, so in preparation for the in-class exercise today, I've uploaded a couple of things that you will need. Uh, the first is a tutorial document. So this is what I'm going to be following in class today primarily. Uh, and this is a tutorial document that's going to essentially uh, walk you through using HECRAS to uh, run simulations of the river hydraulics for Waller Creek. So we're going to be looking at how you can set up, uh, run, and debug a HECRAS hydraulic model. So if you get lost during the class tutorial today, you can always come back and look at this document. Um, I've uploaded a HECRAS in-class activity document. I'm not sure if we're really gonna get time to cover this today, um, but if we don't, I will pick this up on Thursday at the beginning of class. So this kind of gives you an, an opportunity to explore HECRAS and get familiar with the interface by solving a couple uh, questions here. Okay, so this is underneath Canvas files slash activities. Uh, this tutorial document is listed under also Canvas files slash activities uh, as HECRAS tutorial. And then finally, you will also need these two files here. So this is under canvas files slash HECRAS. Uh, there are two files here, waller.g01 and waller.dss. Um, so if you haven't already done so, uh, go ahead and download these. I'm gonna go and download them now. So I got waller.g01 and waller.dss. Okay, so uh, essentially what these are, uh, Waller G01 is a file that describes the geometry, essentially uh, a file that describes the channel geometries of Waller Creek, uh, and it's going to be used to set up our HECRAS model. Waller.dss is actually 
output from a HEC HMS model. And this is going to be used to define the flows that are going to go into our HECRAS model. So for, for a HECRAS model, we need uh, a description of the channel itself. And we also need the input flows that are going to be fed into that channel network. And that's what's going to be used to compute the river profiles within Waller Creek. Okay, cool. Are there any, uh, any questions on those files before I move on? No? Okay, cool. Um, let's go ahead and get started then. Um, I'm going to go and I'm going to open up HECRAS 5.05. Okay, so let's, uh, I'll just give a quick background on HECRAS uh, before I get started here. Um, HECRAS, so much like HECHMS, was developed at the US Army Corps of Engineers um, Hydrologic Engineering Center in Davis, California. Um, the RAS in HECRAS, RAS, stands for River Analysis System. And the model dates all the way back to 1968, uh, where it was initially called HEC1, then it became HEC2, and then it eventually became HECRAS, which is what we have today. Uh, so this is um, software that is used for river and channel modeling. Uh, and it's one of the most common models used in the design of culverts and bridges, particularly along large rivers, uh, which is what we'll be looking at today. Um, and within HECRAS, there are three types of hydraulic solvers. There is a 1D steady flow solver that is based on solving the energy equation. That's what we're gonna be using today. There is a 1D unsteady flow solver that is based on the uh, St. Venant equations, which I talked about more uh, earlier in the class. And there is a 2D unsteady flow solver, which is based on what are called the shallow water equations. Uh, and this is essentially the 2D version of the St. Venant equations. It solves mass uh, and momentum balances in two dimensions. Okay, so that can be used for flood modeling in floodplains in two dimensions. Okay. Uh, the 1D study models are currently used by FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Administration, for modeling um, the 100-year floodplains that are used for uh, flood planning. Uh, so this is essentially where FEMA flood maps come from. It comes from HECRAS study, uh, study flow models. The 1D unstudy flow model is used currently by the uh, National Oceanogra Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA. Uh, in regional river forecast centers for um, operational flood prediction. And the 2D model is used for um, increasingly next generation flood mapping. So FEMA is uh, starting to think about um, using unsteady flood models in their floodplain maps. Okay. Uh, so today we're gonna be looking at just the steady flow case and we're going to be examining the river profile in particular for Waller Creek under a 100 year storm event. Okay, so previously we looked at how we could use HEC HMS to compute the discharges that are entering the channel network. Uh, we're going to use HECRAS to actually look at how the river profile looks uh, under a 100 year storm event. And from that information, we can potentially understand what locations are gonna flood. Okay, so that's one of the, one of the big reasons that HECRAS is used. Are there any are there any general questions on HECRAS, what it's used for, and how it relates to the other models we may have used in this class? Any questions on any questions on HECRAS in general? No. Okay. Cool. Well, with that, let's go ahead and get started with our in-class exercise. As I mentioned, we have a uh, tutorial document here, and I will mostly be following this with maybe a few small changes here and there. Um, but this document, if you get lost, um, always feel free to refer to this document. Uh, I will note that HECRAS is an interesting piece of software, uh, and it makes some interesting user interface choices. Uh, so it can it can be easy to kind of get lost or not know what to do next. Um, so just pay attention 
if you have questions, refer to this document and also let me know if you get lost at any point, okay? Great, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I downloaded uh, those two data files, waller.g01, which is our geometries file and waller.dss. I'm gonna go ahead and copy these. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a new folder under documents to store my HECRAS project. I'm just gonna call this HECRAS in class. Cool, yeah, it rhymes. Um, cool, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna paste those I'm going to paste those files into this folder. Okay, so I'm going to use this folder to kind of store our project. For me, it's just under documents, HECRAS in class, and I have our two data files in here. Okay. So now that we have that, let's go back into HECRAS. So I've opened up HECRAS 5.0.5. Okay, and the first thing we need to do is we need to create a new project. So I'm going to go to file new project, and I have to find that new folder that I created. So I have it as HECRAS in class. Let's go ahead and enter. And I'm just going to call this file uh, waller.prj. So this is our project file. I've entered the title waller here in this title box here. Uh, and it's going to create this file called waller.prj in our new HECRAS in class folder. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'll click OK. It'll show you this pop-up window. Um, just go ahead and click OK. Great, so we've created a project. Okay, the next thing we need to do uh, is load in our geometry files. So there's three main um, components, three main types of data that we need for our HECRAS models in order to run it. The first is the geometry data, which describes the size, shape, and connectivity of our stream cross sections. The second is the flow data. So this defines essentially how much water is in each of those cross sections, how much water is in our river system. And the third is the plan data. So this is kind of the uh, kind of analogous to the control specifications in HEC-HMS. It kind of describes the simulation parameters. So we're going to go through each of these parts uh, to construct our HECRAS model. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is import our geometry data. To do that, I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to go to Import HECRAS Data. Okay. And it will open up this window. I'm going to go make sure we're in HECRAS in class, and I'm going to click on Finalized Waller Creek Geometry. So import the data, I will hit OK. okay and it will load our geometry data. So note that this, uh, this Waller Creek geometry data, this is kind of a simplified model of Waller Creek. Uh, we'll be using it for this in-class tutorial, but um, for your final projects, you'll want to use a different uh, file if you're working on Waller Creek in particular, okay? So just keep that in mind. Okay, so we've imported our geometry file. To view the geometry, we go to edit, and then we go to geometric data. So I'll do that again, because it can be kind of hard to, to find if it's your first time using HECRAS. To go to the geometry uh, and view it, we go to edit and then to geometric data. Okay, And if we open that up, we get a kind of a uh, crow's eye view of our river. So this is Waller Creek. We can zoom in using the scroll wheel. And you know, this arrow here, this blue arrow, indicates the uh, direction going downstream. Okay. We can zoom in and note that we have a couple different elements here. Um, what do you think this blue line is here? Yeah, so this is, this is the river. This is Waller Creek. Um, then we have these brown lines. So these are our river cross sections. Okay. And then we also have these gray boxes. What do you think these gray boxes are? It kind of tells you if you click on it. Yeah, this is, this is a bridge or a culvert. So you have two different types of elements that cross our river. You have cross sections, which essentially describe the geometry of the channel. And you have um, bridges slash culverts, which uh, are kind of modeled differently, okay? 
So those are, those are two different components. Um, we're going to use these menus here to edit those components. Um, junctions we're not really going to be dealing with. River reaches are already defined, but what we're going to look at primarily is different cross sections in our, um, in our HECBRAS model. So let's go ahead. I'm going to select the most upstream cross section. Uh, and I'm going to go here to cross section to look at the cross sectional geometry. So note what I did was I clicked this button here that says cross section on it. Okay. And by default, it will open up to uh, whatever selected in the other pane. Uh, I had the most upstream river station selected. So note that the cross sections have unique numbers. Uh, in HECRAS, these are called river stations. And this is essentially the distance in feet uh, from the most downstream point. But it also serves as a unique identifier for each cross section and or bridge slash culvert. Okay, so note that when I'm talking about river stations, this is a unique ID, but it's also the distance from the most downstream point in feet. Okay, so this is the most upstream cross section. This is river station 32093. Uh, and you can see on the right here, we have kind of a visual of the cross section of the channel. We also have a table here on the left describing the X, Y coordinates of the ground, essentially. So you have the station, which describes the distance from left to right. And you have the elevation, which describes the elevation of each of those points along the ground. Okay. Uh, what do you think these red dots are here? What do you think these red dots are? Sorry? Yeah, so these are these are these are essentially the left and right banks of the channel. Okay, so HECRAS will often model the channel and the what's called the outer bank differently. So note here, um, you have the channel, you have what's called the left outer bank or LOB, and you have the right outer bank or ROB. So in HECRAS, this is important to remember when you're talking about left and right. HECRAS is always looking downstream. Okay, so in all of these cross sections, we are looking downstream. Left would be the left bank looking downstream. Right would be the right bank looking downstream. Okay. Um, and these red dots are defined by these main channel bank stations here. So we have that the left bank is defined at 1166, the right bank is defined at 1204. Okay. Uh, we also have different Manning's roughness values for our different parts of the cross section. So note, you can also see these up here. You'll see that this left part has a Manning's end of 0 0.04. In the channel, it's about 0 0.05. Uh, and then you also have this section here where you have a Manning's roughness of 99.99. Okay. So um, these, these models are generally uh, created by using surveys, and then they will calibrate them to match the, the expected flow behavior. Okay, so uh, are there any questions on the cross-section view? Are any questions on HECRAS cross-sections? Yes. What's creating the So this is probably, uh, I'm not exactly sure for this particular one, but essentially what it's trying to do is, is saying flow should not um, be going through this, this area. Um, it's, it's just limiting the amount of flow that can go through that particular section. I'm not exactly sure what is there, but they're trying to say, yeah, it's, it's basically an obstacle to flow. Okay, are there any other questions on cross sections and HECRAS? Okay, so let's go ahead and go to another cross section here. Uh, we, can, we can look through these to kind of see what they look like. They'll often differ quite a bit. Uh, but let's go to cross section 26780. We can select it from this list here. So I'm going to go to 26780. Let's find it here. Okay. And this is a little bit more downstream. Uh, you'll see that it has more different coordinates for the cross section. Um, one thing I wanted to draw your attention to here is that we have different lengths for the left outer bank 
the right outer bank in the channel. What do you think that is? What are what are they trying to do here in this in this model? Yes. Maybe like turn the channel. Yeah. So if you have a left outer bank that is different from the right outer bank, what that's saying is that your channel is curved. So for instance, if the left outer bank is shorter than the right outer bank, you'll curve to the left. And if your right outer bank is shorter than your left outer bank, you will curve to the right. Okay, so it's a way of representing curvature in the channel. Okay, so what I wanna do here is, I want to go ahead and edit this geometry a little bit. Let's say we want to regrade this section. Um, we can do that in two ways. The first is we can actually go in to this table here and manually modify the values. So that is one way that we can edit the channel geometry. Um, but another way uh, that this isn't included in the tutorial, but it's something many students found useful for their projects is you can go to this button here. It's kind of hidden, but it says jump to the graphical cross-section editor. So I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna edit these uh, channel geometries slightly. So. First here, we got this kind of strange, uh, sharp change in the elevation. What I'm gonna do is kind of smooth this out a little bit so I can just click and drag and I can change the, I can change the points of our cross section. Uh, let's say we also want to kind of expand the channel a little bit. I can just click and drag these channel cross sections as well. Okay, so we're gonna expand our channel a little bit. This is similar to what you might do in the project uh, later on. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this and it should update automatically. If we go back to cross sections, you'll see that that little uh, sharp downturn here is gone. Okay. Um, we can also potentially edit other aspects. I'm not going to do so, but you might edit the curvature by changing these downstream reach lengths as well. Okay, so after you make changes to the channel geometry, um, in order to save them, it's important to do the following. So under geometric data, you have to go to file, save geometry data, or else your changes will be discarded. So make sure you go to file, save geometry data and click save. Okay. And that's it for the channel geometry data for right now. We'll come back to this a little later um, when we do our debugging part of this tutorial. Are there any questions on channel geometry before I move on? Any questions on channel geometry? Yes. When you change all the cross sections, mm -hmm. is it now like if you the average of left cross sections to change? How does it model the cross sections? So it will do it in the same way that uh, it modeled it before the change was made. Okay. So it'll just recompute essentially how the channel changes as it goes through the section between the two cross sections. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. Well, are there any other, any other questions on cross sections? Okay, cool. Let's go ahead then and get our simulation ready to um, model flooding conditions from a 100 year storm event. To do that, we are going to import flow data from the waller.dss file that I downloaded earlier. So what we're going to do here is, uh, in order to run our HECRAS model, we need to have flows defined within the channel network. We're going to import those flows from a existing HEC HMS simulation and use those flows to essentially define how the water profile is going to look. Okay, so we're gonna take, take the flows from HEC HMS we're going to plug them into their corresponding locations in the heck grass model. And we're then going to simulate the model to determine the water surface profile. Okay, to do that, the first thing we have to do is we have to go to edit, and then we're going to go to steady flow data. So we're going to just run a steady analysis here. Uh, essentially what we're doing is we are going to um, model the water profile under the peak flow conditions from the HEC HMS output. So we're just looking at the peak flow and we're gonna treat that as a, a steady state 
um, that we're going to simulate. Okay, so I have opened up our study flow data editor. The first thing we have to do is we have to link, link our simulation to the PEC HMS output. To do that, we go to file, and then we go to set location for DSS connections. Okay, so this is, I have to admit this part is a bit strange um, and it feels a little bit um, like there's a lot of details involved in this part. So just kind of, um, just kind of follow along and let me know if you have any questions because there's kind of some aspects where um, it can be hard to follow here. Okay, so what I've done is I went to under steady flow data, I went to file set location for DSS connections. Okay, and the first thing we have to do is under this menu here where we have DSS file, I'm gonna click this folder to select an existing DSS file. So go ahead and click this folder icon and I'm going to navigate to PECRAS in class, waller.dss. And you'll see it imports the records from our HEC HMS output. Okay, so I can scroll through these and it gives essentially a list of different, um, each of these represents a different hydrograph from the HEC HMS output. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of them. I'm gonna click on this record 182, uh, which shows the hydrograph output um, on February 1st, 1999 for this 100 year storm event at Martin Luther King Boulevard. Uh, to view what this hydrograph looks like, I'm going to go to plot selected path name down here in this corner. And if I click on that, I can see what the hydrograph is going to look like at uh, Martin Luther King Boulevard. You can see it peaks at about mm, a little less than 3000 cubic feet per second. Okay, so we're gonna be using this peak flow value to define our HECRAS simulation. Okay, so what we have to do at this point is we have to go through and we have to assign these different locations here to our locations in the HECRAS model so that we have defined flows within the HECRAS model that correspond to our HEC HMS output. Okay, so this project is a bit uh, tedious and it can be a little bit hard to follow. Um, if you get lost, what I'd recommend doing is go back to the HECRAS tutorial and look at, um, make sure your results match up with the images presented here. So we'll be using the following correspondence between the HEC HMS junctions and the HEC grass cross sections. So for instance, HEC grass cross section 12609 will match up with the hemp hill branch junction from HEC HMS. Uh, HEC grass cross section 8916 will match up with Martin Luther King Boulevard and so on. So if you get lost, just use this table here um, for constructing this matching. Okay. So I'm going to go back to HECPR S. Um, and what we're going to do first is under here, under River Station, uh, I'm going to select our first River Station, which will be 12609. I'm going to go down to 12609. And I'm gonna click this button here for add selected location to table. Okay. And that will add river station 12609 to the table. The next thing we have to do is we have to match this up with the HEC HMS record down here. Okay, so this is where it starts to get a little bit confusing. Um, what we're doing is we're taking cross section 12609 from HECRAS and we're assigning it to this HEC HMS flow record. Okay, so we are going to select, uh, note from our table, we have that this matches up with the Hemp Hill branch. So we're gonna select junction with Hemp Hill and we wanna make sure we're at uh, February 1st, 1999. So once we've selected the correct record, we click, um, uh, let me just make sure. We click, yes, yeah, select DSS path name. And that will set the flow at this HECRAS cross section uh, to the junction with Hemp Hill location. Okay, so we have to do this for each of the cross sections in that table. So I will go ahead and do that here. Our next cross section will be 8916. So I'm going to navigate here to 
8916. I'm going to add selected location to table. Uh, let me just expand this so I can read it better. Okay, and then I'm going to find Martin Luther King Boulevard on February 1st, 1999. And I'm gonna select DSS path name here. And you'll see that it appears up here. Okay, our next record is 7089. So I'm gonna select 7089 from this list. I'm going to add selected location to table. And then I need to find 15th Street. So note that there's a 15 and a 15th street. We want 15th street. So I'm gonna select this record here, which is row 90. Uh, and that corresponds to Jan uh, February 1st, 1999. Okay, so I hit select DSS path name again. Okay, next we have 7th street, which corresponds to cross section 3591. Find three, five, nine, one. I'm going to add selected location to table. And I'm going to find 7th Street in this lower table. This is a bit uh, tedious here. Right, select 7th Street. Uh, next, we need 1st Street, which corresponds to Heckrest cross section 1157. I'm going to go to 1157. Add selected location to table. I'm going to find First Street down here. February 1st, select DSS path name. And last but not least, we have Colorado River, which corresponds to Heckgrass Cross Section 0. We're going to add selected location to table. I'm going to find Colorado River. And I'm going to add the data by clicking select DSS path name. OK. And that's all we need to do here. All right. Are there any questions on that process? Not a question. Just double, you, can just double click on the name. you can double click on the name down here. OK, that uh, that will also that will also work. So good to know. Thank you. OK, so we have them all done. Uh, this is what your final table should look like. It's also in the tutorial document. And we can finish up by clicking OK. OK, and note here we have uh, this message that says DSS connections established. So that linked up our HECRAS simulation with the HEC HMS records. To actually import the data, we need to go to File, DSS Import under Steady Flow Data. So this is the Steady Flow Data window. Yes? So Okay. Are you using 5.0.5 or a new? Okay. Cool. Uh, Becky, do you think you could maybe help and see if you can debug? Okay. Thank you. Okay. So to actually import the data, we've essentially linked the two records together. To actually import the data, we need to go to file. DSS import, okay, and we'll bring up this window. Uh, we need to specify a starting date, uh, ending date, starting time and ending time. So for the starting date, I'm gonna say 01 Feb 1999. Starting time is gonna be 00 colon 00 colon 00 for midnight. Ending date is going to be 02 February 1999. And the ending time is going to be 00 colon 00 colon 00. Okay, we need to make sure that we check get peak flows at all locations for final profile. So that's right here. And for the interval, we're going to select six hours. And uh, note, uh, before clicking OK, let's uh, make sure we click Import Data. Okay. And you see that it imported the peak flows for each of those locations from the HMS model. Okay, so we've imported our flow data. Um, we still have an empty record here for the most upstream cross section. I'm just going to make up a peak flow and I'm going to say uh, 2700 as our peak flow. Oops. Okay. So 2700. 
and we can hit apply data to save our uh, changes. Okay, finally, what we need to do, oh, yes. I'm actually not sure if this is a real storm event or if this is uh, just the date that they chose. Uh, I can check on that, but yeah. Cool. Um, so there's one more thing we need to do, uh, which is we need to set boundary conditions for the solver. So this is needed to establish boundary conditions for the energy equation. And we can do this by selecting reach boundary conditions. Um, so there's several different options here. Uh, and there, it also, the method we select also depends on whether we have supercritical or subcritical flow. So uh, in general, if you have supercritical flow, you need uh, the flow within the channel, and you also need a depth boundary condition upstream. If you have subcritical flow, you need the flow in the channel and the depth downstream. We're going to assume that the flow is subcritical. And then we have several different options for how to define a boundary condition at the most downstream junction. Um, the first is known water surface. So this would be like if you have a lake at the most downstream point and you know the exact water elevation in that lake, you can define the depth at the most downstream junction. Uh, critical depth essentially assumes that at the most downstream point, the flow goes over a waterfall or something where it transitions through the critical depth. So that might be if you have like a waterfall or some sort of uh, culvert that is you know, above the downstream um, boundary. Normal depth uh, essentially assumes that your most downstream element uh, continues for a very long time uh, or essentially is just is just a very long channel such that the normal depth is reached. And then sometimes you have a rating curve, uh, which is a relationship between the depth and discharge in that reach. So sometimes uh, cities will go and construct rating curves. If you have that information, it's usually the best one to use. Uh, but for our purposes, we're just going to select critical depth. So essentially, we're going to assume that when the flow reaches the Colorado River, it'll go over a transition in the critical depth. You know, for instance, it might go over a waterfall or something into the Colorado River. Uh, so that's the boundary condition we're going to use, and we're going to set it for the downstream boundary condition. Okay, are there any questions on uh, boundary conditions? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and select okay, and I'm gonna hit apply data. Okay, and with that, we have imported all of the flow data into our HECRAS simulation. So let's go ahead and save our flow data. I mean, I went, so essentially what happened there was I went to file and I went to save flow data and I'm just going to title this uh, Waller flow data. Okay, and our data is all saved. All right, the final thing we need to do is we need to actually run the simulation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to run I'm going to go to steady flow analysis. Um, we have to enter a ID. So I'm just going to enter existing because this is our existing model. Uh, flow regime, we're going to set as subcritical. So we're going to assume this, the flow is subcritical. And I think that's all we need to do here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit compute and cross my fingers and see what happens. Oh, no, we got some errors. So uh, this is something I planned for, so don't worry. Uh, these were supposed to happen. So there's a couple different errors in our model that we have to correct to get it to run properly, okay? Uh, so let's take a look and see what these errors say. Okay, so we have one for river section, or sorry, for river station 28779, which is a culvert. It says that the distance from the upstream cross section to the culvert exceeds the distance between bounding cross sections. And it gives us the same error for river station 23698, which is also a culvert. So we need to go in now and we need to debug our model in order to correct these problems so that the simulation will run correctly. So this is um, often what you'll encounter in practice. Your model will very rarely run the first time. Sometimes you need to go in and fix uh, errors with your model before you can complete the actual simulation. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so we have to go back in and we have to edit the geometry to make these errors go away. 
Okay, so to do that, let's go ahead and close out the study flow analysis. I'm gonna get rid of this to make things easier to see here. We're gonna go back into edit and then geometric data. Okay, so we're gonna go and we're gonna edit our geometry data. And there are two problematic cross sections. We have 28779 and 23698. So if we go and look, 28779, I can't see them on this map here, but from the description, we know that they're culverts. So we can go ahead and edit them by clicking this button here over on the left that says edit and or create bridges and culverts. Okay, so let's go to 28779. And note here that we have for this culvert, it's between cross sections 28811 and 28747. The distance between them is 64 feet. All right, so the distance between the upstream and downstream cross sections is 64 feet. So let's go ahead and look at the culvert. Okay. And for this culvert, we have that the culvert length is 64 feet, but the distance to the upstream cross section is 1.5 feet. So essentially the culvert combined with this distance here is 65.5 feet, which is longer than the distance between the cross sections. So that's why it's throwing this error. So we can correct this in a couple different ways. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to subtract 1.5 from the length of the culvert to make this 62.5, okay? So we're gonna change the culvert length to 62.5. And I'm going to go ahead and hit okay. Okay, our second culvert that was having problems is 23698. Let's go ahead and look at that one. Okay, so we've navigated to culvert 23698. Let's go ahead and look at the culvert window, edit culvert barrels. Okay. And we have, oh, uh, really quick, we see that the distance between the cross sections is 49 feet. Let's go ahead and look at the culvert. Okay, we see that this culvert length is 40 and the distance to the upstream cross section is 4.5. So this culvert is actually fine. This culvert is less than the length between the two cross sections. The actual problem is when you go to, oh no, okay, snooze this. Uh, the actual problem is when you go to culvert two. Okay, so if you navigate to this window here and you select culvert two, there's actually two culvert barrels within this uh, single culvert element. You'll see that the culvert length is 49 and the distance to the upstream cross section is 4.5. So this is too long. This is uh, longer than the distance between the bounding cross sections. So I'm gonna go ahead and just reduce the culvert length to uh, 40. Okay, so this is culvert number two in uh, River Station 23698. And I will walk around after this and address any problems you might be having. Um, okay. Are there any questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually, sorry, I misspoke. Um, there's culvert groups and then there are barrels. So I selected, um, there's culvert group one, which has barrel one and two, and then there's culvert number two, culvert group number two, which has barrel one. Um, so each culvert group may have multiple barrels. Um, so what I did, I selected culvert group, culvert number two, and I changed the culvert length from 49 to 40. Okay, cool. So with that change, the error should go away. Let's go ahead and exit out of this window. And before we leave the geometric data editor, we need to click file, save geometry data. Okay. So we've saved our geometry data. Let's go back to run steady flow analysis. 
all of this should remain the same. And let's go ahead and hit compute. I cross my fingers and you should get something like this, which means the simulation completed successfully. Okay. Is anyone, is anyone not able to reach this screen? Yes. Uh, if you have problems, I will go ahead and come around. Um, before I do that though, I just want to show you uh, very quickly the output just to confirm that we to confirm that we have results. So we can go to view cross sections. If we want to view the individual cross sections, I'll come back to this. And we can go to view uh, water surface profile to view the entire Waller Creek. So I'm just going to leave this up. This is what you should, you should get something that looks like this. Uh, but I will come around now and answer any questions and address problems that you might be having. Okay. Okay. So I'll do that for about five or 10 or so minutes. Okay. Cool. So yeah. it looks like everyone was able to successfully run the model. Um, what I'm going to do is for the rest of the class period today, um, I will let you go ahead and get started on ArcG uh, not ArcGIS, on HECRAS in class activity one. Go ahead and try to do as much of that activity as you can. Uh, it won't be due by the end of today. We'll continue it on Thursday at the beginning of class, finish that up, and then we'll start you on your course projects on Thursday. But go ahead and get started on that in-class activity. Um, I'll, I'll answer your question in a second. The two things that you may need. Um, so one, I briefly showed you the cross sections, but you can view the cross sections for all of our river stations here. Um, so note, we have our most upstream section here. The green dotted line is the energy grade line. The um, blue is the water surface. The red dotted line is the critical flow. Um, and note that we have a couple different uh, types of cross sections here. So the ones that are labeled uh, culv are culverts. Culv U means the upstream end of the culvert. Culv D means the downstream end of the culvert. Sorry, I just went past that. So you have an upstream and a downstream end of each culvert and they'll have slightly different water levels. You'll also have BR. Does anyone know what that stands for? Bridge, right? So you can view some of these bridges. Um, note that this is a pretty intense flood event because we can see like, you know, for these, even for these bridges here, we have that the water is often, you know, several feet above the top of the roadway. Like just looking through a couple of these cross sections here. So this is a yeah, pretty intense, pretty intense flood event. This, this culvert here, which potentially may have a road over it. Um, you know, this is several feet underwater. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at these. Um, the second thing I wanted to show you is just the water surface profile. Um, so this shows the entire channel from the upstream end all the way at Highland Mall down to the Colorado River. You can view in, uh, sorry, you can zoom in just by collecting, uh, selecting the zoom in button and selecting a cross section. Note that you may want to double check some of the outputs so sometimes at grass can produce some strange results uh, like here. So just keep this in mind when you're using numerical solvers. Um, heck grass iterates about 20 times before it gives up and just gives you a result. And so you'll often get kind of these spurious numerical results. I would just advise you anytime you're using numerical software like this to never take it for granted and always, uh, always check the results. Um, so in the, pro the profile view allows you to do that kind of over the entire channel. So I'll give you the next, I guess, uh, five minutes if you want to get started on the activity. Uh, we'll pick it up on Thursday and then we'll start applying HECRAS to your class projects. Okay, great. Thank you.